Well, Nick, now that you've seen the inside of the house, definitely seems like you love it. It's a pretty impressive budget you have as well. What is it that you do again? Oh yeah, I work on the, my family business. Uh, my dad and his business partner, you know, they have a worm farm. A worm farm, yeah. really? What's it called? It's called I Got Worms. Interesting. Well, anyway, uh, it seems like you love the house. What do we have to do to get you in today? Well, I'm really having trouble understanding like the full size of the property, the property line. Is there a better way you could show me that? You know, there's gotta be a better way. And now there is. Yeah, I mean, now I totally get it. I can see the entire area and the property line. I'm good to go. Cash offer? For sure. Sweet. All right, this is George Edmondson with Motion VFX Realty, and today we're talking about M Tracker 3D area. Who, who are you talking to? On to the tutorial. M Tracker 3D area is finally here. As you can see here, we have already gone ahead and applied M Tracker 3D, and we have clicked the track button. So this clip is now tracked. So the next thing we would want to do is go over and copy our track. Then we can go over to where M Tracker 3D area is located, which is a brand new section in our titles, M Tracker 3D area. M Tracker 3D area comes with 23 area titles and they're all a lot of fun. For this one, why don't we just pick one up? Let's pick up number 11. How about it? We are gonna drag it in on top of our clip. Let's go ahead and drag that out so that it is filling the entirety of our clip. And you can see here, we need to paste our tracking data. So let's click paste. And then we can see tracking data saved successfully and done. And here is where the magic happens. So we're all familiar with our gizmo in M Tracker 3D. With this one, however, we get to do something a lot of fun, which is we start to click and we start to outline our area. I'm not holding anything down. I'm simply just clicking with my gizmo and we are going to start outlining this area here all the way around because we are showing this off. So we are just clicking away as we are outlining these points. And then we're gonna click that final to create our final shape. Over in our inspector, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the in animation. I'm gonna turn it off so that we can see our outline here a bit better. And we're gonna just kind of scrub forward and there now you can see our outline is perfectly following that patch of dirt there across the street from my house. Now, once you select each of these points, you'll notice you get a pop-up box. If you click this button here to the left, that will just delete the point. And if you see the slider, you can slide and you'll notice that we get a bit of a curve. So it's not such a sharp line and you can really add some curvature. So for instance, we might want to add one right over in this area. So why don't we just click it and we'll add a little bit more of a curve there with our slider. There we go. And we can readjust the position as well just by clicking and dragging. Now, you also obviously have a 3D gizmo. If you are moving any of these, then you are adjusting, of course, on the axis that you have selected. So as you can see, we're going up on Y, but because this is three dimensional, you can see that that is really putting it up in the air. So it's really cool. And this is a really great way that if you wanted to outline houses or outline anything standing upright, then you'd be able to. So a really neat little tool there if you're not outlining anything that's just simply flat on the ground like this patch of dirt. So if you can see, you can also go over and you see each of these lines in between each of our points will be highlighted. And then you see these sort of boxes that are saying we're available if you click. So I'm gonna click one and now you can see here, if we wanted to add an additional point, we would click this button and now we have our additional point that we can move freely. 
Or if we see here, this is where our labels come in and you can add up to 16 different labels, which is kind of incredible. So you can get a lot of information on there if you'd like. So why don't we click this one here and we can go in and we can add label one and boom, there is label one and it's gonna just by default kind of be laying there on the ground in between those two points. Over on our inspector, we've got the in duration. So on our in animation, we can speed that up or slow that down. Then we have our out animation and out duration. And then we've got a few global tools. So we have a global scale. Now notice this does say global. So what this means is if we had multiple labels, multiple elements happening, that will affect all of those globally so that you can quickly make adjustments with these global tools. And we have global roundness and you can see that that is rounding off in between all of our points. So if we don't want it to be quite so sharp, we can do that. We have a drop down arrow here and we have all of our line settings. We can change our color from solid to gradient if we would like. We have our line size. If we want to outline that a bit stronger, which honestly I kind of do, we have our line width. We have our dash length. This would only be applicable to one of the titles that is using dashes instead of a solid line. So you can change the length of the dash, how big the gap is, the roundness, and if it's doing any kind of movement, the movement speed as well. We have our line animation, and these are all really cool. We can grow, blur, thicken, flicker, multiply. We can do all kinds of things to animate that line in however you would like. And then we have our shadow. And then we can come down to our points settings. So again, this is going to change our points if we would like those to be visible. You can change the color around the smoothness, etc. And we have the clear path option. So if we were to click this, that means all of this goes away and you start over. Now we have our labels options and our frames for our labels. So why don't we come on down to our label and let's just call this Josh's land. All right, so label position. So I'd kind of like to just put this out in the center. So of course it's gonna start in between our line, but we're gonna take our label position and we're just gonna kind of move it down a bit. And then let's go on Y and we can pop it in right there in the center and check this out. It's just already gonna be there. So why don't we turn our animation in? We can turn that back on now. There we go. So I'm just gonna use my arrows here and we can see that that's kind of growing in and then there's some great animation. And then we've got Josh's land there just smack in the center. All right, that looks cool, but we can do so much more. So let's go back over to our labels position and you can see we also have a label rotation. I would like to actually rotate this and be a little bit more 3D feeling. So I'm gonna kind of rotate it here and then we're gonna push it up on Z so that it's kind of floating. And now you'll see, let's use our arrows. It is going to animate in and then we are seeing that that is Josh's land and it's just kind of floating above there. It looks so stinking cool. Another super cool feature is the fill option. So if we go down here on M Tracker area number 15, we have the fill design opacity. We've got our fill design color that you can obviously make changes here as well. Each preset has its own unique fill design and they're all fully customizable. We can change from a design to a solid if we would like, or even a drop zone. Check that out on the solid. If you wanted, you could do some sort of a Luma mask or maybe even fill it with green and key it out. And then we can set our drop zone, of course, and we can make changes to the size, scale, rotation, etc. So if you wanted to maybe put some house plans in or something like that, as you see here, super useful and really easy to do. We can set a fill caption 
and that is going to have a caption there along with our drop zone and then of course we can make changes to our text parameters so that we can get the composition exactly how we want it and that honestly is about it. M Tracker 3D area is so easy to use. It is very intuitive. You have all of your options here in your inspector and you can work really quickly. And of course with M Tracker 3D, you can integrate the other M Tracker 3D expansions and titles along with this to get really creative. We hope that you find this tool useful. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Again, my name is George Edmondson with motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.